All right, folks, let's talk about electricity for a moment. Um, there's a couple of uh, calculations that you're on the hook for. Um, they're not very difficult, so I'm not going to spend um, forever on these. Um, but these measurements are the, or calculations have to do with uh, coulombs and volts. Now, we already know that electricity uh, is caused by the movement of electrons. When you take an electron and you move it from one place to another, um, it took you, energy was expended in order to move that electron. So when we talk about electrical fields, we have to talk about the charges of the objects that we are trying to do math on. And yes, we could say, oh yeah, what happens if we move a billion electrons from this object to that object? But consider this. Electrons are super, super small. And there's a lot of them in the universe. There's, there's a couple kicking around. So what I want you to think about is, do we have a way of counting r another sort of really, really small thing? Think chemistry. We have a way of counting really, really small things like atoms and ions. And you may recall that was the mole. And a mole of something was 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Uh, and I'm just going to say particles. So we have this number called the mole that lets us keep track of how many ions or how many uh, protons or, you know, atoms there are or molecules, and that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of something. Um, a coulomb is how we measure charge, and a coulomb is simply 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons. Not a number that you have to memorize in any capacity. Uh, this is in your data booklet and also in your, uh, your um, textbook. So we need to be able to convert from number of electrons to number of coulombs. And it's very simple. I'm going to write this in two different ways, two different fractions, in other words. Remember, I'm a really big proponent of unit conversion. And I mean, most science teachers are big unit conversion people these days. And the reason why is because it's the most powerful way uh, to answer a question where there's math involved. Because if you do the math, or if you do the unit cancellation and unit work correct, it's pretty much guaranteed that you get the question right. So there's two ways of thinking about a unit conversion. Like you could say, oh, how many, how many uh, centimeters are there in a meter? Or you could say, how many meters are there in a centimeter? You can go bo in both directions. Same deal here. We can say, how many electrons are there in a coulomb? We could also say, how many coulombs are there in an electron? Obviously, since the difference between one coulomb and 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18. That's a giant difference. It means that one electron is a just totally tiny, tiny fraction of a coulomb. It also means that a coulomb contains a lot of electrons. It's the same thing. Like how many cups are there in a liter? Four. How many liters are there in a cup? One quarter. They are reciprocals. So. I like to use these conversion factors because they really, really, really simplify the work that we need to do.
So let's do a quick example. Let's say that we have uh, we need to take 2.42 coulombs and say how many electrons is this? So we're going to go from coulombs to electrons. First thing I'm going to do is write down the value that we were given in the question along with big C that's going to be our unit for coulombs. This is one of those lucky times where uh, the starting letter of the actual word and the symbol are the same. The sucky thing is the where uh, what it looks like in a formula is the different letter, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So we need to turn our Coulomb's number into an electron's number. Now since there's a lot of electrons in one Coulomb, it means that this number is going to be massive. It's going to be a big number with a big exponent. Don't freak out. That's fine. Remember, numbers are just numbers. They all obey the same rules. So I need to put inside of this bracket one of these two formulas. Only one of them is going to make sense. And the way that I've taught you in other units is Whatever we want to get rid of, we make sure it's on the bottom of the fraction. Whatever we want in the answer, we make sure is on the top of the fraction. So that means that this one is for sure wrong because the number coming in here is on the top of a fraction. So if we were to do this, and again, this is extremely wrong, If we were to do that, we're going to have a, a unit that is utter nonsense. We're going to have Coulomb times a Coulomb. That's a Coulomb squared, which I don't even know if that's a useful thing. I'm pretty sure it's not. We're going to have a Coulomb squared per electron. That's not a meaningful thing. All we want to do is get an electron number here. So let's do that. I'll use red. Why not? So I need to put the values in in the correct uh, orientation. So we're going to put our electrons number up top. And we're going to put our Coulomb's number on the bottom. Now we've got a C on top and a C on the bottom. They are going to cancel each other out. Oh, hey, look, it's an electron. That's the unit we want in the answer. So all I need to do, and I'm going to grab my calculator that's over here on my desk, and do the math. So I'm going to go 2.42 multiplied by 6.25 times 10 to the 18. And we are going to get 1.51 times 10 to the 19 electrons. So that's a lot of electrons. That's a huge number. But again, that should make sense because electrons are really tiny and there's a lot of them. So you're going to get big numbers for electrons. What if you have to go the other direction? So instead of going from coulombs to electrons, now we're going to take a shot at going from electrons to coulombs. Usually, you're going to get a really tiny number of coulombs. Remember up here, we got a really big number of electrons. It makes sense. If we go the other way, we're going to get usually small numbers. So I start with my number here. Four hundred and fifty thousand, which sounds like a lot, but remember we need 
6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons to make one coulomb. You can also think about this like um, eggs and a dozen. So one dozen eggs is 12 eggs. How, m how many dozens is one egg? That would be one twelfth. So I'm going to set up my conversion bracket. In this case, I know that my answer should be in coulombs. So I write coulombs at the end. And now I have to figure out, using my brain, what to put in here. Now, since we used that one before, you might think, OK, we're going to use this one now. Yeah, we're going to use this one now because we want whatever we uh, is in the answer to be on top and whatever we're trying to get rid of on the bottom. So 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18, and that's electrons. The E minus, that little electron symbol, that is a unit. So we're going to cancel that sucker out, giving us coulombs, which is the answer unit. This always works. As long as you understand this very simple math, you will cr just crush these questions. So now we just have to do the math. Since this is on the bottom, we're dividing. So I'm going to go 450,000 divided by 6.25 times 10 to the 18. And we're going to get a number that's very small, which is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 14. Coulombs. So just a super, super, super minuscule amount of coulombs, which makes sense because there's an enormous number of electrons in a coulomb. This looks like a big number, but it's nowhere near 10 to the 18. So let's take a look at just one more. Let's do, hmm. You may, from time to time, get hit with one of these. You may see it in the math, or as like, it looks like a U, but this is the Greek letter mu. No, not the Pokemon. It's M-U. Uh, it means micro. And you may recall, but you might not, from Science 10, micro is one uh, millionth. So we can turn this 3.57 microcoulombs. There's a little quick cheat we can do, which is micro is going to be times 10 to the minus 6. You might remember words like milli. Milli would be times 10 to the minus 3. Because 10 to the minus 3 is 1 on 1,000. Micro is 1 on 1 million. So that's 10 to the minus 6. It's a very small number. Oops. Then we have to get our conversion bracket up. So we've got that. Boom. And we know that our answer is going to be in electrons. So now all we must do is get the right conversion in here. So the right conversion is to put Coulomb on the bottom and 6.25 times 10 to the 18 up top. And we do the math. So 3.57 times 10 to the minus 6, and multiplied by 6.25 times 10 to the 18. And we get still a large number, 2.23 times 10 to the 13. That's still a huge number of electrons. So that's just really nails it. It drives it home that, yes, a Coulomb contains an enormous amount of electrons. So that's it for this uh, 
this little mini lesson. We're going to do another one right quick about volts. And then we'll talk about fields. So see you soon.